H2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys supports 100% job-oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time pay, lifetime access to live classes and videos. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For free demo class, visit h2kinfosys.com. All right, so welcome back. Um, in my previous video, we talked uh, how you can schedule these Jenkins jobs and the execution part. And that's where we discussed uh, the scenario, like the, we scheduled a couple of scenarios. And if the current scenario, current job failed to run, then what's going to happen to the, the, the following job? That's where we talked um, the, if the current job failed, then the following job is not, whatever the downstream job is not going to trigger at all, right? And then, so today we're going to look at, suppose if the, whatever this uh, workflow one, the current job, if it succeeds, then what's going to happen to the downstream job? Like even let's quick uh, recap, like say in this, um, the workflow one, like we schedule a job, like say configure. That's where like you can modify any of these options. Like what we did is um, basically in order to correct that, like like reporting issue. Basically, it seems like it's a kind of the case sense too. In the earlier video, like we discussed um, how you can schedule this JNU test report part of your post build action. And we mentioned it like this XML is uh, caps, that's where it's causing the problem. Like it should be small, dot XML. Okay, that's anyway good to know. And uh, maybe sometimes like we get into this kind of mess up, so just to make sure you put uh, the small dot XMLs. And then the next, um, the, the workflow two, like we scheduled, right? If you go to this configure, Then here, like we schedule, okay, whenever the workflow one is succeeds, then you're going to schedule the workflow two, right? That's how it's, we configured. So what I'm going to do is, now I'm going to run this, okay, the workflow one, and see like whether the workflow is going, two is going to trigger. So build now. And let's uh, watch, like see so here, like you see, now it's showing like what uh, job is currently executing, right? This is the job that's building now. Workflow one. Okay, so it seems like um, it opened then it signed job. Okay, that's how the workflow one executed. See now it automatically triggers this workflow too because the workflow one is passed. Even if you look at um, the status, when you refresh this one, you see the workflow one, now it says succeed. Whereas in my previous video, we talked like if, if it did fail, then what's going to happen to the workflow too. Now in this case, like basically it um, succeeded, that's where the workflow two is automatically triggered. That's what in reality, right? What happens is whenever you got the build deployed, and that the developer's build is ready, then automatically this test has to be triggered. That's how we're going to schedule the jobs, right? Even in the workflow one itself, you're going to check like the developer build status. If it is succeed, then you're going to run this workflow one. Then the workflow one succeeds, then it's going to run workflow two. So that's how like you can schedule and you can just, um, there are different other stuff you can do, generating this nice reporting part and, um, um, how you can post these results and even there are a lot of plugins like you can play with the Jenkins with the different options the nice way like you can generate the reporting part and how you can run, run the batch batch tests right from the command prompt executions and how you can even install the application right sometimes like you get a build from 
developers like how you can install that application even before you run the test so you can you take use of this um, command line execution and install your application on the system then you run your test so all the stuff we're going to discuss um, soon in my next um, video lectures okay and like before you go so let me refresh this one so then it's going to show you like what's the status you see the workflow one workflow two and both are succeeded right and even if you click on any of these jobs then it's going to show you the graph kind of thing you see this is a nice kind of the graph right it shows what is your results trend right so is it a passed or failed kind of scenario right this way like you see um, the the test for how they executed and the status like whether they failed uh, the past kind of status okay even if you go to the workflow tool like you will see the same kind of um, the status like you see it shows um, this is the kind of the graph like it shows the results trend like whether it's a pass or fail kind of situation Okay, so we're going to uh, good to know like this um, the Jenkins tool how you can schedule this CFT test and we're going to talk to you soon. Thank you so much. Thanks for your time.